Hey everybody, and welcome back to the next installment of my Dialing In series. I actually had a request uh, after doing last week's uh, episode with the Supro. I had somebody ask if I could do the high watt version um, of the Dialing In series, which is actually the Huat uh, 100 in our Helix, right? Which is uh, modeling a high watt amp, and I don't even know which one to be honest with you, but it doesn't matter. We know it's a high watt amp. Um, that's listed actually, uh, Helix Help is a great website that if anybody wants to go and sort of see all the, the various amp models that are being um, modeled and the different effects, they have a good uh, comprehensive list there. So that's a great site to go to. But anyways, I always loved this high watt uh, model. I've used it on a number of different projects I've done. I use it a little bit on my new album. I've used it on some of the guitar solo covers. And I think maybe some of the sort of artist specific uh, dialing in Sounds I've done, maybe the Alex Lifeson one, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but anyways, really nice amp model. And so I thought I would dive in and do a dialing in with this and see if we can get, again, a nice sort of four snapshot uh, preset ranging from clean all the way up to like more of a, you know, distorted lead. I hate to call some of these snapshots distortion because some of these amps aren't really designed for a ton of distortion. With the Supro last time, I, I threw a kinky boost in front of it to kind of hit it a little bit harder. Not, not really my personal favorite thing to do. I'm not a big overdrive pedal guy. I kind of like to get my uh, overdrive tones from the amp and if the particular amp doesn't have enough, I'll just go to a different amp, you know? Uh, that's that, but I guess it's my personal preference. A lot of folks really, really do like putting the overdrive pedals in front. And I've done, I do it sometimes also. But with this one, I just decided to kind of go with just the amp and not really try to push it any more than what's already in there, okay? So let's dive over to HX Edit and take a look. I'm um, using my normal um, <clears throat> little template uh, with uh, the um, LA Studio Comp at the end. Uh, I don't know how that got bumped to the 6.1, it's more than around 5.5. Um, a little EQ at the end, sort of the mastering section. Uh, the verb, nothing changes you can see on these. Uh, they're not snapshot enabled. So whatever you see processing going on in these is gonna be for all snapshots, right? So I have a little bit of room verb with pre-delay of 20, decay of 4.3, mix of 27%. These are all things you can adjust to your own personal preference if you like the preset overall, but you know, want a little bit of a different reverb. The delay is a transistor tape, like I oftentimes use. I really like that delay. It's just kind of suits what I, my, you know, what I feel is what I want from a delay pedal. Um, and that's gonna only be engaged on the lead snapshot. Okay, the other thing I do um, is I have my little split crossover uh, thing here um, that I boost some of the highs above 650 hertz and cut out some of the lows below. And one of the reasons is because I'm using the Huat 100 412 model speaker cabinet with the 121 ribbon mic. Now by default, when you set this up, uh, it comes with the 121 ribbon at a distance of one inch. Now that's gonna be a very uh, low end accentuated sound, right? I've talked about that many times in some of my Creating Great Tone series where I take a ribbon mic and I kind of pull it back off the speaker, right? But it didn't sound bad, but it was a little heavy in the low end as well as some of the uh, default settings on the amp itself. I think the bass may have been up at nine, which really kind of gave a, a heavy low end sound to it. So I, I fixed a few of those things up. But what I did do is I stuck with the 121 ribbon. I love that microphone. Uh, pulled it back three and a half inches. And on my clean setting here, another thing I did is I went and boosted all of the frequencies above 650 hertz just by a dB and a half to give it some clarity. And I pulled back the lows. Uh, by 3 dB. So everything below 650 hertz, I pulled back by 3 dB just to kind of open the sound up and get it a little bit away from being so accentuated in the bottom end. On the amp, what I did is I set my drive at 3, bass at 5.3, mid at 4.9, treble at 6.6, .6, presence at 7.6, channel volume at 10 just to get a little bit of volume out of it, and my master at 6.6. .6. I've snapshot enabled all of these. It didn't mean that I, I kind of just do that at the beginning just in case I want to change one of these parameters. Uh, in one of the other snapshots, I don't have to worry about it. So I just kind of snapshot enabled them all. It doesn't, I don't think I played with them a ton, but we'll see as we go through our snapshots. So that basically gave us, uh, and, and one other thing, the EQ at the end, the sort of mastering style EQ, uh, 160 hertz at a Q of 1.4, I boosted by one dB. Uh, 450 hertz Q of 1.4, I dropped by two dB. And 4.5 kilohertz uh, Q of 1.5 high gain uh, up one dB. 
um, and the low cut at 100 hertz, high cut at 12 kilohertz. So that, that's what that, that, that EQ stays on all of our snapshots. So that's just kind of, again, like a mastering thing. Just kind of open the sound up, dial a little bit of the mud, give the bottom a little bit of a push and very subtle, really not big moves, right? Um, okay, so what does this clean snapshot sound like then? Here's a bridge pickup on my Godin Summit with Lawler El Rayo pickups, okay? <laughs> Okay, so mid neck and middle pickup. And neck pickup. Okay, so a really nice clean tone. I really tried to get that to stay clean. So I'm playing with humbuckers, but it wasn't really breaking up that much, just so I had some room to move through my other snaps. Okay, so what changes now when I go to snapshot two, well, which I called push, if you notice. Um, snapshot one, we went from a drive of three, I bumped it up to a drive of seven on that one. Um, and the master went up to eight, channel volume dropped down, to uh, from 10 to seven and the bass went from 5.3 to 3.7 just to kind of clean up that low end a little bit more again um what else changed here i don't believe i changed the split crossover no that stayed at 1.5 there and i believe that was all the changes i made so really just going around the drive master and a little bit on the bass to kind of control the low end and that sounds like this Middle and neck. And neck pickup. Okay, so I was really liking almost the, the squishiness of this sound. It had a real nice breakup with this kind of squishy bottom end, which is a, a, a combination, I think, of what the amp model sounds like, but also because we're using that uh, 121 ribbon mic, right? All right, so then we move over to our third snapshot. Now what happens here, again, um, let me see if I change that split crossover here. Yes, okay, so that's where I make that change. If you notice, Snapshot 1 and 2 had the uh, all the frequencies above 650 hertz uh, boosted 1.5 dB. Uh, on Snapshots 3 and 4, that gets boosted up by one more dB up to 
plus 2.5. A little more clarity on the top and a little more cut for our drive and our lead sounds. Um, okay, so then I also boost the drive up to nine, the master up to eight, channel volume comes back to five. I don't know if there's any other changes there. No, so all the tone stack stays the same. So just a little boost in the drive and the master to get us this sound. really like the way that kind of cuts. There's still that nice bottom squishiness to it, but it has a little bit of bite to it now too. Now anybody who finds that it has a little too much bite could come back here and just dial this split crossover back to the 1.5 we had, and now it sound like this. Back to how I had it. You know, it's simple changes. This is all personal preference stuff, right? Maybe you get this out to a gig and you go, oh, it's just cutting a little too much, a little bit too abrasive in the high end at a louder volume. Well, go into your, your split crossover and dial those highs back by like a dB or whatever. And you know, it, it's gonna be easy, easy tweak or even just your amp controls, right? Maybe in their treble or presence, maybe bring those back a little bit. It's gonna be fine either way. Okay, so that's the sound of our overdrive snapshots. Um, what happens when I switch over to the lead snapshot? Well, what I did here is I cranked up the drive, cranked up the master to 10, uh, brought the channel volume back accordingly just to keep the, 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 pre the different snapshots kind of volume balanced. Anything happen on the tone stack here? Let me see. Uh, no. So really I kept, other than from snapshot one, from two, three, and four, uh, push, OD, and lead, I kind of kept the tone stack the same. Um, the, the change we already talked about in the top end of the uh, split crossover happens, and I bring that delay in, right? Nothing else changes. So I was pretty happy with the overall general frequency contours I had dialed in there, and I was just kind of getting a little more gain out of it, right? And so that sounds like this with our lead channel. Again, if you find that's a little too bitey, you know, come into your split crossover, bring that back by uh, DB or so. But that's gonna be, again, very, very much personal preference based, right? to the neck and middle pickup. Neck pickup. Okay, so I was really liking that tone. I said there's something nice in the bottom end of this, kind of has that squishy quality, very uh, 
kind of old school vibe to it, which is really neat. So this is basically, this lead channel is a you know, essentially a cranked who watt or high watt model, right? With the 121 ribbon mic on it. So. So what do you guys think? I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you like the patch. Like I said, it's, you know, depending on your monitoring system and your guitar and your playing style, there's going to be little tweaks that will be needed for this. And, you know, even the, the volume you're playing at, once you get these things to stage volume, sometimes we notice that there's little tweaks that have to be, maybe there's a little bit too much high end or a little bit too much low end or whatever. Um, and as we crank it up, those are easy, easy fixes, right? That's what I love so much about the split crossover technique is that we can make sort of kind of nice broad carvings to the uh, EQ contour just by rolling that up a dB or two here and there. And it's, it's a really quick fix if we get to a situation where we're playing live maybe and maybe some frequencies coming out too much or not coming out enough and uh, it's, a, it's a quick way to dial that back. So. so anyways, guys, I'm going to put this up on custom tone for you guys. Feel free to grab it and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope it kind of becomes a patch you can use live or in the studio with minimal tweaking. And uh, yeah, hope it, uh, hope it works for a lot of you guys, right? Um, and like I said, if there's, you know, if there's not enough gain in this, well then maybe it's not the right amp model for whatever situation you're playing in, right? We pick a, an amp model that's going to give us a little bit more gain this this is great for that vintagey vibe sort of mid gain type of a sound i think you know and that's a lot of times where what the sounds that i'm kind of looking for you know but uh, everybody again everybody's preferences are different right so so thank you guys so much for tuning in i really appreciate it thanks for all the support please like and share the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i really appreciate all the support and uh, the great comments and happy to answer any questions you guys have leave them for me in the comment section below all right thanks for tuning in guys ciao for now and we'll talk very soon take care